The Fujicast is an independent Loading Zone production. Well, there's not long left to claim 10% off all workshops, mentoring, portfolio reviews and presets when you visit kevinmullinsworkshops.co.uk. All you have to do is use the word Fujicast upon checkout and you'll receive 10% off the workshops, the mentoring, the portfolio reviews and the presets. Offer ends 31st July. So, Kev, the the popular, uh, it's not a myth really, the Murphy's Law um, thing is is real that every time um, Kev we go to record one of these next door, <laughs> the mm. guy arrives with his mm. with his mower. Can you hear that? I can. Yeah, and I'm not. I, I, it's kind of a light humming. So if you feel though that, um, when you're listening to the first, what will probably be about twenty minutes, because it's not a massive lawn next door. If you, if you think for the first twenty minutes you've got light tinnitus, it's not. Mm. It's next door doing their lawn. I have proper tinnitus. Yeah, ah, oh. does not help. Is yours a high pitch, or is it a? No, mine's high pitched. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's not so bad right now. It had, last week was quite good, but sometimes it's it's always there. It's yeah. always there, but sometimes it's really. You oh, know. mine's just gone. I oh, know it's not. He's turning. <laughs> he's, he's turned his vacuum cleaner off. <laughs> Yeah, my I I remember the first. I think I've told this story before, but I remember the first time that I realised I had tinnitus. It didn't start as a high pitched whistle for me. It started. Well, I woke up one night and I I nudged Sam. Oi, oi! Who would leave their car running outside? It was a. It sounded like a lorry that was on idle. I said, "Who just? Well, we are next to some lights, but this was like ten minutes. So I thought." What's he done? Is he parked up? <laughs> and in the end, Sam pushed me out of bed and said, go and look. And um, there was nobody there. <laughs> that was the day I realised I had tinnitus. Joy, oh joy. The Fuji cast. Yes, welcome to another week. Monday, don't they come round quickly? You and your questions today from our electronic mailbag, a real mixed bag today too. Uh, keep sending them in, by the way. Um, click at fujicast.co.uk is the address, or you can use the contact form on the nice... It's not so new, shiny, new, shiny website now, but we still think of it that way, of course. Um, If you've emailed before, fantastic. You're officially what we know as a friend of the show. If you've never emailed before, get on and send one in. Uh, Also today, club indulgence, whether the drinks are free, unless you're throwing down spirits, then you can pay for yourself. Kev's book of the week. Uh, Do we have a clue this week for your book of the week? Sometimes you sort of keep it a secret until you do it. Okay, so the clue is... Um, self-published. Ah, right, okay. I'm very much into self-publishing at the moment. I so leave it yeah. at that. Okay. Um, also, we've got a disaster story, um, and today we're going to hear from the wedding photographer, Adam Johnson. Oh, plus we have a competition, uh, and a very good one at that as well, don't we? We do, yeah. yes. Are we going to do that now, or should we, should we sort of leave you on... Uh, we'll tease you a bit. Tease you, you, you a bit. Uh, let's do. Let's go. Let's do it. Uh, ten, ten, no. Yes. Yeah. Yes, ten fifteen no, minutes. No, no, yes. Whatever. <laughs> you sound like I that. I don't know. I don't care. No. Let's yes. Just yes. Do it. No. No. Mm. Yeah. We'll do it about ten fifteen minutes in. Very very good prize. You are going to have to earn it. Yes. But the best things in life are definitely not free. Correct. Well, they are to you if you win this. <laughs> so uh, so good luck. Um, You're looking confused. I, I know. Why are you the reason confused? why I'm looking confused is because uh, Kev, Kev, Kev's got that look. Of, uh, he could look confused opening a cardboard box uh, this morning. Uh, I, <laughs> What's um, the matter with you, man? Uh, something came into my mind and yeah. then exited like a fish between my fingers, just wiggled out of my brain. Right. And um, <laughs> nice, but, but nice what it picture. was, <laughs> yeah, what it was <laughs> was um, we never won. We never won the podcast award. Oh no, I know. I, I, well, I knew this, but I didn't want to break. I didn't. I didn't tell you. Uh, I didn't. It was. It was. I didn't feel I wanted to tell you. Well, I, I found knew. out the other day. Oh, yeah, but it was all <laughs> online, wasn't it? Yeah, as well. So, yeah. but uh, so thank you to all of you that yeah. did vote for us in yes, the uh, yes. People's Choice Awards. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think we came reasonably low down that list. Oh, I think we were just below the bit where you would have. You reckon? Had been wearing your shiny cocktail dress and enjoying a night out. Yeah, with your front, mask on in front of Zoom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, it's interesting because I, I actually made a point of listening to yeah. uh, a little bit of an episode of each one of the the ones that were on that short list of the, the readers' yeah, yeah, votes yeah. or whatever it's called. What did you think? Votes. Yeah, I mean, they were all definitely very different. Very, you know, Some of them are, are about culture, some of them about sex, some of them about relationships. Yeah. But the ones, what I did notice were they, they some of them had very big followers or yeah. some of them are like comedians on the circuit yeah, and things like that, yeah. you know. Um, Should they be allowed, really? 
you know. Well, it's, it's listener's choice, isn't it? I suppose yeah, you can't, suppose so. can't prejudice it. Mm. But, uh, yeah, so we didn't win. Uh, but next year, <laughs> I think we should aim to win that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can easily do it. Well, well let, let, let's change the show slightly. Clearly, sex wins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so it'll be the, the, um, the Fuji Sexy cast. The Fuji Sexy cast, <laughs> and we'll get, we'll get Jack D to host it. <laughs> that would be it. Brilliant. <laughs> we'll go home. Yeah. <laughs> Oh uh, dear! What yeah. are you going to wear for the Fuji Sexy Cast? <laughs> well, I've got this little negligee. Uh, <laughs> got your little mankini. <laughs> you saved from your your stag party all those years uh, ago, right? Um, well, thank you. Yes, thank you. If you you did vote, and you know, like, congratulations to yeah. all of those other people that did win. Yeah, I hope you enjoy your night out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> enjoy yourself. <laughs> Have a champagne on me. Yeah. Anyway, right, um, should we go for questions? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, do you want to go first or me? Uh, I'll go first, okay. although it's not really a question, it's more of a recommendation. Well, and right, this okay. is from Ted Patrick, and he says, I look forward to your show every week. I usually listen while taking my Tuesday hike around the park. A hike? Uh, yeah, yeah. You can hike any day of the week if you want, Ted. It's entirely up to you. It doesn't I'll tell have to you be what, Tuesdays. Ted, your hikes aren't long enough, clearly, if it's just one, <laughs> one of these episodes. It shouldn't hike. I mean, what's the difference between a saunter and a hike? Uh, I don't know, just the way you spell it, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he goes on to say, I have a suggestion for a book which oh, I love and okay. love having in my small library. Mm. It's called uh, The Sweet Flypaper of Life by Roy de Carver, who's the photographer, and Langston Hughes, who's a poet. Yes. Uh, this is a short moving story about a family in Harlem, New York, with photographs to illustrate. First publishing was 1955. Now, obviously, I. Yeah, originally I think this was meant to be, you know, for the book review section. Yeah. I can't review a book that I don't have. No. So I thought I'd just ring it out. And he goes on to say one feature of the book that is is that the story and the photographs are so imaginatively integrated into one work. Langston Hughes was one of our premier poets in the last century and to make this even more appropriate today, a black poet of universal appeal. Right. I don't know anything about the photographer, he says, right. um, other than he's popular in museums. Yeah. So there you go. So uh, this is the Maybe there's one, there's one for you to buy then, Kev, so you can review it. Yeah, I, well, I, 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 when I saw the email come in, I did kind of look at it and think, oh, I should look that up, but I haven't. So The Sweet Fly Paper of Life, Roy de Carver, the photographer, Langston Hughes, the poet. There you go, recommendation for you. Thank oh, you, Ted Patrick. What a great title. Um, two from Tommy Vessel here. Should I take the the uh, the above or, or the below one? Um, I will just go for the first one. Hi Neil. Hi Kev. Thank you, uh, and we'll save the other one, Tommy, for another time. Thank you again for your efforts in creating the daily shows, which became a regular way to keep the creative flame alight during the darkest months of lockdown. Do you think we're going to go back to darkest months of lockdown again? Oh, I just don't, don't, don't. I mean, even... new, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. We had all these conversations when we started with the, with the daily, but I, just, I see the numbers rising. It feels like mm. months ago when we did those dailies. It does. Like properly months ago. And we'll months be, and we'll months and months. We've been doing them again for months and months and months at this rate. Uh, I don't know. Honestly, to be totally honest with you, I've given up caring. <laughs> Kev! No, I'm done with, the, with it all. I just want it to go away. I see a, an awful lot <laughs> online at the moment. Sorry, Tommy, we will come back to your question. This is becoming a regular theme when we tackle questions now. About the... the um, about the muz- Have you seen the muzzled campaign? Hashtag muzzled. No, the people that don't want want to wear uh, want to wear masks. Uh, uh, I, it's it's quite a campaign, Kev. We must not get Kev, careful what you say because we it, mustn't get a, political. Well, I was saying to Sam the other day. I tell you what, this is this is getting this is getting. Uh, <laughs> he's his mask. It's never going to fit over your headphones. <laughs> There's my camera. I've got. Oh, whoops. Like, this Let, is what I sound like with a mask on. Yeah, hang on. Do let I me sound t- any different? Well, you sound all right. Let me take a picture. There we go, there's Kev. It's not easy to breathe. I no. Is that a homemade one? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't even get it off now. <laughs> it's, br- it's stuck on my headphones. Can, can somebody call the emergency services? Kev can't get his mask off. The uh, AA or anybody, RAC, anybody will do. Our next door neighbour made them. They're very nice. Yeah. Uh, Is that, it's, I tell you what, that's fancy because that's a reversible one. You can either have grey yeah. or you can have patterned. Yeah, depending oh. on my mood. I like yeah. will constantly wear grey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, it's getting it, it's getting more feisty than the Brexit debate. This muzzled debate. Oh, yeah. oh, you know, I I just wish I just wish the government would say wear a mask or don't wear a mask, whatever, rather yeah. than well, you know, <laughs> it's a little bit like this. 
Yeah. If you'd like to wear, we think you should wear a mask, but only in shops. You don't need to wear a mask <laughs> in a pub where everybody's just going to get it anyway, yeah. so it doesn't matter. You're all going to get really drunk and cuddle each other. Mm. You must wear your masks in the shop. It's okay. Um, all is all right, because we've got Michael Gove to rescue us. <laughs> oh, no, politics is a no-no. Let's stop the politics. I know, I know, I know. I, know. Um, I just want the whole thing to go away. That's, that's what I said to somebody, I was speaking to Jack Ladenberg actually yesterday on the phone, um, and he, he we, we were kind of chewing the fat of it all. Right. And uh, I was like, it just feels like, I said to him, if I have to go outside every day and, and you know, this is, you, you, you would both concluded and agreed that we hate the term the new normal yeah hate that term yeah i've used it quite a few times uh, well, sorry, sorry jack <laughs> it's a valid valid term but but you know what we do we call it. it then we just i just don't want it to be the normal that's right. the point that it implies that this is the forever you know yeah. and honestly if if we all have to wear masks forever and socially distance and i'm just going to lock the front door and stay in That's lock it. the front door not shut the front door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah shut the front door i'm just going to lock the front door and stay in all oh, right uh, okay. me Gemma, kids two yeah. dogs guinea pig oh don't forget your new chickens i oh, know you don't have them you gave them away yeah see now you them. need them now you need them this is your food you've just yeah. given your food source away yeah uh, anyway uh, back to tommy thank you again for the efforts in creating the daily shows which became a regular way to keep the creative flame alight during the darkest months of lockdown um, anyway, a question for you both. If you had to choose only one way of viewing your photos from now on, would you rather flip through a photo album or a photo book or one-off prints that you could hold in your hands or project them onto a telly screen and view them digitally? Regards from Colorado, Tommy Vessel. Tommy Two Tone. <laughs> That's his Instagram, at Tommy underscore Two underscore Tone. What Tommy Two Tone. Great right? name, Tommy yeah, Two Tone. Said, well, he says, I'm colourblind and my childhood nickname stuck and somehow um, still love photography, <laughs> especially black and white. Tommy Two Tone. Oh, I'll tell you what. I love it. People That's, are cruel. That is the kind of thing that I would have in my phone book, along with DIY Dave, Tommy Two Tone. Big Nick. Yeah, you've t- I'll tell you what, um, Tommy, you have Tommy just, Two Tone. You've just joined Kev's uh, wonderful brigade that go down the pub together when, when it's the new normal. Tommy Two Tone. <laughs> Tommy Two Tone. See, in, this all start in the Welsh Valleys. That's what they call each other. They, Do they? They call them by their, you know, it's like. Um, what were you, George the Milker, or oh. whatever? You were Kev uh, the what? Well, I didn't live in the Welsh Valleys though, oh, so I lived right. in a big in a big city. Um, I was just usually called Kev. Are <clears throat> oh, we? <were you? laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so what would you choose? To, I would personally would love to uh, uh, to have the book, of you're course. Go for books, yeah. However, yeah. the versatility of digital and screens and everything it cannot be, you know, ignored. Yeah. Our, our kids, we we have um, Sam makes the the family annual because I'm frankly hopeless at photographing the kids. You're amazing at it, and funnily enough, our guest today, Adam Johnson, is is um, I mean, he's he's children portraits are like a work of art. They're, they're a photo shoot themselves each time. So Sam does all the photography. She she um, um, she uses blurb books to publish them. And uh, the kids love leafing through them. They'll spend hours looking through those books. Yeah, I mean, I've noticed as the kids get a little bit older, though, it bec- it's become more difficult. I wonder if Sam's finding the same. Really? Uh, yeah, because... Well, to make the pictures. To make the pictures. Oh, right, to yeah, make them. Yeah, and also, uh, you know, when they, they kind of look back through these pictures before, they would love it, you know, oh, look, that was me with that funny face yeah, and yeah. stuff, and now it's like, oh, don't show that to anyone. I hope you're not going to put that on the internet, Dad. Yeah, you know, I kind of get that these days. Oh, I did. I mean, I took a picture of Jack like this the other day, which uh, you know, the reason that was like I call it now evidence collecting. So when his <laughs> mum comes back later and says, well, "Have you been doing your schoolwork?" and he says, "Yes, mum, I've been perfect till morning." I said, "No, you weren't." What about when I caught you on that photograph on your iPhone when you should have been doing your homeschooling? God, I tell you what, homeschooling is now over. Thank goodness for that for a few weeks. Yeah. So what about you, book or screen? Definitely book. Mm. Yeah, I love my books. Yeah. But I mean, I don't. Imagine collect- if you had to print every one of your pictures, yeah. your personal family picture collection. Yeah. Imagine if you. Well, we had- did. We used to. That's exactly what we used to do. What everyone you took, everyone. Oh, so okay, look, put it this way: every single picture you would want to keep that you've mm. taken about of the family. Mm. That would be a bit tough. You wouldn't be able to print no. them all, would you? I must have 30,000. Yeah, but then there was a difference between once upon a time, uh, you know, having a, having a few 24 or 36 rolls and these days... No, I know, I get that, of course. The amount of But of this is imagery. what I'm saying, we need, we need both. We need digital yeah. and prints. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, you, you, you know, there's stuff you just don't... You couldn't print. It'd be All the trees would die. It would all go... Okay. <laughs> On that note, your question. <laughs> uh... <laughs> 
Okay, this is from Mark. Now, if happy, you're... happy Monday, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, happy Monday. If you remember, yeah, raise a glass. <laughs> We're all doomed. I'm in one of those moods. Uh, Mark... like having... I tell you what, it is like having Jack D as a co-presenter. Uh, Gemma always calls me Jack D. <laughs> We've does. got it. We don't need to hire him for next year. We've got him. <laughs> So Mark, Mark Dell, if you remember, he wrote to us a few weeks ago asking about a small little point-and-shoot camera oh, that he should oh, get. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And we suggested something like an XF10 or a um, Rico GR, something or other. Yeah. Anyway, he's written us back, Mark, and he says, I made my choice and bought a little Lumix DMC TZ100. Oh, well done, you. The people who name these cameras... It's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. DMC TZ100. Yeah. So far, he's very pleased with it. Um, he's attached a photo of his dog, Indy, which we both looked at. Yeah. Very nice picture it yeah. was, too. Uh, he hasn't... Indy's not too well, unfortunately. Oh. No. Um, legs. Oh. Our Alsatians do have problems, I think, with... Yeah. Poor Indy. Yeah. Is there somebody else I know who's got a dog called Indy? And that's... I think it might be York Place Studios. I think they've got a dog called Indy as well. Oh. Anyway. Uh, he has a question that goes with this. Uh, I use Lightroom CC on my iPad Pro uh, for most of my edits in photography now as I had to stop weddings due to ill health. All right. I cannot seem to find the next upgrade to storage with the cloud system Adobe uses. I get 100 gigabytes of Adobe storage with the plan. I don't actually have those images backed up other than on Adobe. What would you suggest? Uh, maybe select folders to download to the iPad overnight and back up to Google Photos and Amazon Photos, etc., etc. I wow. guess the question is, he's got images on Adobe Cloud, and should he back them up elsewhere? And I think he's also asking, how do you increase the capacity of your Adobe Cloud storage? Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want them just to be in in one place in the cloud. I mean, I I have several servers, real servers of my own in different places, and then I use a backup facility in the cloud. I certainly wouldn't trust it all in one place. Yeah, I kind of agree. Um, although I typically, all my business stuff is all on Dropbox, like everything. Not so the doc documents and stuff? Documents. Well, what happens if that was ever compromised and, and stuff was lost or, or or you had a Mullins Day where you deleted everything by accident? Well, Dropbox... I suppose you can keep, roll back, can't Dropbox you? Yeah, keeps yeah, it for 90 yeah, days every, yeah. and everything, every change you make is, is recorded as well. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm assuming that Dropbox are not going to drop off the planet. And and I, I, have, I have fought with myself over this before and I'm thinking I should really back up my Dropbox folder to Google Cloud. And then I'm thinking, actually, this is what I'm paying, I don't know. You're paying Dropbox for that. 150 quid yeah. a year, yeah. whatever it is, to Dropbox. When does it stop? Yeah, where do you where do you keep going? So I, 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 I did sit myself down and give myself a stern talking to one yeah. day and said, just trust it, trust the Dropbox. Image-wise, I uh, my my personal images are all just backed up locally and then onto a, uh, a RAID thing. Yeah. Um, and then occasionally I will export jpegs and pop those up to the cloud and everything weddings are all in dropbox so so all my commercial stuff is backed up but this is more of a personal thing because as mark yeah, says he yeah. no longer shoots weddings no. um so yeah I, I wouldn't overthink it mark i would i would trust adobe if if i'm honest um especially if you're only using an ipad because you're, you're going to be limited to a certain extent of um, storage space how you increase i have 400 gig on my um cloud so on my mm. adobe cloud i don't know whether that's because i've got the top tier package of adobe it, yeah, subscription possibly is i'm sure you can upgrade click on the little cloudy icon and and see they always try to sell you stuff there <laughs> do they yeah it's like my i've got a google account and um i never use google drive or anything but i have a google account uh and it just keeps popping up and telling me you, your one terabyte is, is full. And I'm like, I've got literally no idea what's in it. And yeah. I go to my Google Drive, I go and log on there, and I can see three pictures, three files, right. that are like from That's four weird, years then. ago. And it yeah. tells me it's full. I don't know. I think it might be the Google Mail, and it's probably all connected to that. And because I don't use it, it's probably got yeah. a gigabyte's worth of spam in it. Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. Anyway, there you go, Mark. Good luck with that. Lawrence Share. just before we do uh, some of the reviews this week. Hi, guys. Enjoying the podcast. Interested in external mics for recording video. Do you have any suggestions for, for microphones to use from Lawrence in Melbourne in Australia? You ever been to Australia? No. Mm. This, is, this question is firmly in your court. Well, yes and no, funnily enough. Um, it would have been, apart from the fact that you said something very interesting when you came into the room earlier. It's all tied up with the X-T4, which I was very interested in. Oh, yeah. But in, in terms of, um, yeah, I mean, I use a little video micro. Um, uh, micro, micro, micro um, from, from Rode, which are absolutely brilliant. Um, 
Well, I, I use those. I mean, it depends what you're using your external microphone for, really. But yeah. the most important thing you always have to remember, there's one, one very, very simple rule of thumb. Always, always, always have the microphone as close to the talent as you possibly can. Talent being the showbiz word for the person that you're recording, if it is, is indeed people that you're recording. The closer you are to the mouth, the more resonance you'll get. So the more you come off a microphone, the more it sounds roomy, obviously. And the more you come in, the more you can do a Kipling's cake advert. I'm going to try that now. See how I sound like it. Ginster's right. sausage rolls. You now it turns you Cockney. <laughs> it's proximity Cockney. You're so mellifluous. <laughs> but so you have to. That's that's the, that's a simple rule of thumb. I was always amazed when I saw. Um, and, and these days, wedding filmmakers have become so so much more, just so so much more aware of sound. I think. But for when I started, which isn't that long ago, fifteen years ago, shooting weddings. The videographers I that used is to quite a long time. Ago. I suppose so, yeah, the videographers <laughs> that I used to work with in those days, um, they used to um, they used to record everything from across a room with a with a, a shotgun microphone. It must have sounded like people were in a cupboard. Well, that's what I did with the the XT4. <laughs> but no, yeah, now this is why, where we arrive at the XT4. The, so tell us about this amazing because it sounds. I've, I've heard it. It sounded amazing. Yeah, I mean, well, it, so it was a. It was only yesterday or the day before or the day before that. I can't remember. <laughs> um, but it, so we have a band in town in Malmesbury called the Long Players and they are very good and there's about 30 members of it. And so they do these gigs every now and again. And this one was a socially distanced gig in Malmesbury Abbey House Gardens. Yeah. Right. I was supposed to help you with that, wasn't you I? You were, yeah. I, but I did end up socially distanced only an hour away. <laughs> yeah, very socially distanced. <laughs> uh, anyway, so it's not a, you know, they, they just wanted it recorded. So I'm not, I'm not by any chance stage a professional music videographer at all uh they did have a uh, sound engineer there who was recording all the audio multi-channels different yeah. mics and everything into his his box and uh we clapboarded it every scene so uh, we can we can sit so i'll take his music when it's all done yeah. and and overlay it onto the video however i did for my because you need reference audio right for it to, to sync against so That's i stuck right. the ntg4 plus on top of the XT4, um, used the little three and a half mil to XLR adapter, plugged it in, and the audio was incredible. I thought from that well, into I the NT, into the uh, XT4 it was really impressive. Like really, really I know, good. I know um, it had depth. I mean, you were helped by the fact you were outside. Yeah, of so, course. So the ambience um, that, that was afforded you was was really nice but it was interesting because the ntg obviously is a is a um directional mic it is you should use it for voices yeah, you yeah. know it's just one mic it's not and it, i would imagine it was pointed just in at one person the it lead, was lead pointed singer. directly at yeah. the lead singer and, and okay. nobody else but the interesting thing was the sound was coming from behind because the speakers were throwing it back at the at the players yeah so it wasn't the sound wasn't coming forward towards the camera mm. the sound was coming out of the speakers behind the camera uh so yeah it was very peculiar but it sounded amazing the yeah, xt4 yeah, the yeah. um the little whatever they've got going on in there the little fairies that pedal the, the engineering sound in there uh, pedaling very hard well i was i was impressed by the the ntg4 doing that because I, I looked around and i thought right where's the wall maybe it's bouncing the sound back but there were there were no walls it was all it was all greenery it's in a garden i know yeah. Yeah. So, if anything, it was soaking the sound up. Yeah, you wouldn't believe how many times we got like halfway through a, a song, and because it's all live, and then a blinking aeroplane would fly over the top oh, wow. or something. Oh, yeah. Uh, Do you mean they don't direct those around Malmesbury? It's very posh in Malmesbury. <laughs> We've had loads of small aeroplanes recently. Have you? Right. Yeah, loads. Yeah. Well, um, Lawrence, um, I, I'm more than happy for you to drop me a line or something and tell me the um, what you're using it for, because then I, I might be able to give you a... Um, a, a slightly more educated answer to that because uh, it might be that you're recording wildlife or something like that in which case I'd probably suggest a slight, slightly different setup you ready for, for some uh, should we go to club indulgence have you got some you got some reviews there I put them down there yeah. oh we've got to do the competition as well yeah, haven't we we'll do yeah. it after this we'll do it after this definitely see I told you we'd, we'd make you wait a few minutes so um, shall I start EG9999 Kevin and Neil make a fabulous duo who make us sound like Batman and Robin. Who would you be? Their knowledge, ability to explain things and wide variety of topics make this podcast a winner. However, it's their candid, unscripted, hilarious banter that I love the most. Entertaining and informative. Thank you very much. This one is from Minor Planet. 
<laughs> uh, he says Fuji Entertainers Neil and Kevin happy to give your very original podcast a five star review humorous quality educational insightful and a sincere quality to your guest speakers mm. makes my Monday morning kickoff journeys a time to look forward to uh, there we go Thank Eribo um, has said it's my go to when I need my brain to switch off I'm not quite sure you know who that's... Eribo is don't you who's Eribo Emily oh is it yeah Ah. Oh. Why Eribo then? Why not Emily? I don't know. This one is from Anantos. Hang on, she had written something else. Oh, sorry, I thought you'd finished. <laughs> no, I was just you just interrupted me. <laughs> uh, another huge thank you to you both for always coming up with new material and now keeping the show open every day during this difficult time. I was written a couple of months ago, this one. Yeah, some of these are yeah. a little bit older as well. Yeah. Um, Hang on, I haven't finished. Oh, God, blind me. And what I find particularly inspiring is that you keep the level of expertise from your speakers varied. Except Neil. <laughs> I've finished. So you'll notice then that I slipped in that some of these are quite old. That, yeah. That's 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 a hint, dear listeners. Yeah. That is a hint. No, I think I've just taken them from the bottom of the pile. I'll come to the top of the pile. Here reviews. Yeah. Reviews. Reviews are good. Anyway, this is Nanto Sealins. He says, informative, humorous and creative. Great podcast. Just added to my select few subscribed podcasts. Informative and witty. Laugh out loud level witty. <laughs> I'm desperately trying to switch to Fujifilm this year. And this is a great way to learn about the system, photography and creativity in general. Nanto Sealins from Australia. Thank you. Have you been there? And Mr. Beat, last one. Great mix of info, <laughs> advice, tips and humour. I love this podcast. Well produced, great resource for any Fujifilm shooter. Can't wait for each episode. Keep it up, guys. We will. And if you've sent in one of these, you always need to remember, especially that... You're our favourite listener and we mean it. We sincerely do. Right. Um, competition. 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 This is a really, really good prize. Yeah, so yeah. we have a tour box to give away. <laughs> How do you spell tour box? Uh, just as it sounds, T O U R B O X. Right, oh, tour box. Tour box. Tour box. Tour box. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like one of them when you look it up on. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say moustache? How do you say uh, how do you say Nikon? Nikon. There we go. How do you say Turbox? Turbox. Yeah, yeah, I feel like you're you're having a go at my accent there. <laughs> no, it just made you made it sound Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> Turbox. <laughs> Turbox. Yeah, it's quite hard. Well, to say. I tell you what. As far as Turbox is concerned, you can never get this many um, <laughs> ne- many mentions of the name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. So anyway, let's cut to the chase. Yes. Turbox is a uh, a kind of MIDI controller for Lightroom. Works on Windows and Mac, and it's nice. I've got one. Uh, I would never. You've got one. I've got one. Where's I, mine? I. Uh, huh? You can borrow mine. Oh. I would never, I'll never keep, think I'll, about. I'll keep it with your thirty-five millimeter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have you got my? Yeah, you've got that. Yeah. You? I'm go sure on, you. Sorry, go on. Uh, I would never recommend anything that I don't use. Of course, That's, that goes for my YouTube videos and all sorts of various things like that. So, Toolbox is a little uh, MIDI controller that allows you to. Um, control Lightroom much easier, I suppose, is the thing. If you, I don't actually use a tablet, a no. you know, a Wacom tablet or anything like no. that. But if you did, you can pretty much just go hands free on Lightroom. Uh, so you've got knobs and buttons and you know, I dials like, and I like paddles. The tactile feature of knobs and buttons, and I never could with a, with a Wacom tablet. So I can never get. I I just it never really. Yeah, it didn't feel comfortable. Or work. I know some people love working like that. It didn't. Didn't the, work for me. The tablets didn't work for me either. But the Toolbox definitely does, and I use it. I use it. I will be using it for my weddings when they start coming online again. Wedding. But I have been using it all the way through the lockdown for the uh, kind of personal stuff and everything. And it's great because actually, even simple things like having the picture just move next and being able to control the exposure instantly with a, just a, a twizzle of a dial, rather than going up to the slider and pulling it and left, right, etc. Um, so I like it. We like it. We have one. To give away, we also have a discount code should you wish to purchase it. So uh, we've decided that Neil and I had a executive decision meeting earlier, which involved us looking blankly at each other and thinking, how can we run this competition? And a bit of drinking. And uh, and we decided that uh, I will put a page on the website. So you will have to go to the website for this. Uh, the page where you just look in the menu, I'll call it Torbox um, or Torbox, <laughs> however you wish to pronounce it. It will be quite clear. Yeah. So you have to go to the website, fujcast.co.uk in the menu there will be an option called toolbox and in there will be a form or a little box or something for you to send us a picture Mm. now we've decided we're going to run this for four weeks 
and we will announce the winner of the tour books on August the 10th 2020 if you are listening in the future world um, in the new normal world Uh, August 10th 2020 which will incidentally be my 116th birthday (laughs) oh happy birthday yeah there we go Uh, so that will be my happy birthday present to you will be from (laughs) Torbox and we will announce the winner then so the picture we've decided we thought we'd do a theme and the theme is going to be a picture that has um, defined your coming out of lockdown of lockdown in some some way your yes your removal from lockdown so you'll need to give us your email address and uh, there'll be a form to upload the picture and one entry only per person what defines your your exit from lockdown do you think um well i've changed the brand of beer (laughs) because (laughs) so your picture would be a picture of a a bottle of beer we're no longer just restricted to going to the co-op you see Ah, so we've got some i've got some funky stuff from Lidl's. Did which you? we wouldn't be able to get when we were in proper Liddles? lockdown. Liddles? Yeah. Liddles? Not in Malmesbury? No, no, no. Really? Liddles not in Malmesbury. No. The Liddles is so. in, in um, <laughs> Simon Sester. Although oh, they it? will, they are building a Liddles. You're travelling to go to these these I don't beer emporiums? I don't do it. Gemma, Gemma does, does she? it. Okay. Yeah, right. I stay at home with my mask on looking out the window <laughs> right, Jack D <laughs> <laughs> so there you go right to recap the, it's a tour box um, obviously we will put all of the links in the website uh, tour box is the product it's a, it's a really cool little thing and um, I, I'll, on that page I'll, I'll put little videos and all that kind of stuff on there the form will be there for you to upload a picture that defines your exit from um, lockdown, lockdown. Yeah. now M- Neil and I are just going to pick the one that we like the most we're going to have an executive meeting aren't we yeah, yeah. So it's not necessarily going to be the one that's the most technically perfect. As I always say, a picture doesn't need to be good. It just needs to be important. There we go. There we go. So So, 10th of August. Perfect. deadline. Look forward to it. Um, Start them rolling in. Right. Well, you may have been wondering what the, the show's title, Leap in the Net Will Appear, has to do with photography. Well, they were the words of advice offered to today's guest, UK and destination wedding photographer, Adam Johnson, who, like many social photographers over the last four months, has watched his calendar go into some kind of commercial shutdown. Um, So today, an interview that's based on that piece of advice afforded him by a Manchester portrait photographer called Anna Hardy, though a brisk Google search reveals it was the American author, John Burroughs, who originally penned these words, which are, I think, so potent to anybody with any kind of dream and I'm attaching this and shoehorning it, uh, I, I guess, as a theme pertinently to photographers. But if you've been thinking about starting a, a photographic career, or if, like a good few listeners who've contacted us in the, the last six months, you took 2020 as your, your launch year, or, of course, if you're fully pro and wondering how the devil to get up and running with, say, some new plans that you've hatched, I'm hoping you'll get some decent inspiration from a social photographer who's been shooting weddings for a decade, who started really because he just wanted to make sure he saw more of his young son. With just a couple of bookings in the bag, his wife said, tell you what, quit the job, see what you can do, effectively. Now, if you're not a career photographer or don't intend to be, I still think Adam's story is a charming tale of confidence from somebody who's usually very cautious. He's got a stack load of awards in his trophy cupboard, more awards actually than the the number of years he's even been shooting. This is not so much a a start, middle and end chat as I've chosen a handful of specific areas I wanted to talk with him about today. Adam Johnson does things differently and I'm going to start with one part of his website. A part of the website I often go to initially when researching, usually just to get their tone and celebration. Adam, of a photographer who doesn't have an about page as such. It's called ARJ Style. Have you tired with reading about people's love of cupcakes? Because it was it's refreshing to see somebody actually do something different. I don't know. I'm not, it's not, it wasn't created out of judgment of, of what other people do. Uh, I definitely... There definitely was an element of, the, of you know, it came out because I thought, do, well, do clients really need to know that I'm a big fan of jalapeno peppers? You know, is that really going to... Are they going to book me over... The, the next person because I prefer whatever it is on, in our personal life? Or do they really need to know what makes me tick about about photography and pictures and, and how that's going to translate into their day and what it me- really means for them? So that's where my about page came from, really, and why I twisted it around into, you know, here's everything that I love about photography and how it trans- how it becomes pictures at your wedding. It, I just didn't think they need to know about me. And also, you know, it's a deeper conversation because the whole ideal client uh, philosophy as well is 
my ideal client isn't always myself. So my tastes and, you know, trivial tastes are not really relevant to whether somebody should or shouldn't book me, I think, for, mm. for weddings. I think they should really – I've always thought my the pictures should speak for themselves – and then they should think I'm an all right person. You know, that's the, when we meet, they should just think, oh, he's cool. We, we'd be quite happy to have him there. But, you know, I, 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 it came out of really the about pages probably whenever I launched this website, which I think was 2016-ish. And at that time, you know, I'm a big fan of, of York Place Studios also. I'm good friends with them. And at that time, they were one, they stood out to me as photographers who had an ethos. They had a, there was something that sat behind the work that they made and they knew what that was. They knew where that work was coming from and what drove it. And I didn't know that about my own work at that time. So, I, so I spent a lot of time really sitting down and thinking, where does my, where do my pictures come from? What is it that makes me tick? What, what is it that makes my pictures potentially different from the next guy? So that's where it, it was a big project, really personal project to make that about page that mm-hmm. wasn't just about, you know, how many, you know, how many kids I've got or what food I like. Although talking about the kids, I do enjoy the fact that you post a lot about your family. Um, and you're so very good, um, uh, sickeningly good, actually, Adam, with your images of family. They are quite literally a shoot in themselves, I think. Um, a, lot, a lot of photographers aren't particularly good at being the family photographer, but you are. <laughs> are, you ever, are you ever off duty? Yeah, all the time. Uh, the, the, uh, the thing about my family photography, of my own family, uh, is I don't do it all the time. I'm not, I don't tend to just take a camera into the living room and, and snap the kids or, you know, right now they're one of them's on his uh, PS4 and the other one's on his Nintendo switch. That's not going to make particularly interesting pictures for me, but I do tend to take it when we do something. So it's more like if we have a day out or if we go on holiday, then I will dedicate some time to taking pictures of it in the way that I like to take pictures. I don't really have any passion for just taking random snapshots. So I never really, I never take pictures with my phone. Uh, If I'm going to take pictures, I want them to be good and i want it to i want them to make me a better photographer as well so i haven't taken any family pictures of the family this year for mm. instance probably you know a handful at best so i think it's a it's the whole smoke and mirrors of instagram thing again you know i post quite a lot of on instagram family pictures because i have two instagrams one for my wedding work and the rest is just for pictures i take in yeah in general yeah. life and people do ask me that quite a lot actually about whether i'm they, they think it's great that i'm always taking family photos but in reality i'm not and i i do it does tend to just happen when we're actually doing something that i think is uh worth capturing so you haven't been shooting a lot of, a lot of lockdown stuff by the sound of it at all <laughs> no and no. i've been made to feel quite bad about that but the uh Who, who's, the rea- made, who's made you feel bad about that your wife or <laughs> it, not i've not been made to feel directly bad about it right more in the other people have ah, said that yes. we have, a, as, as photographers, yes. we almost have a responsibility yes. to capture this time. And I haven't felt that responsibility. I've almost felt the opposite in that it's not particularly a time that I, I personally want to remember for <laughs> forever because I haven't enjoyed it. So it's interesting. I get the I get the whole angle that it's, a, that it's an interesting time, but I'm quite happy for it to come and go and not really remember it. Mm, you sound like me. You're going to have a massive party the day we find a cure or vaccine. I'm having a big fireworks display. You're invited, Adam, actually. Adam. Oh, thanks. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. How did it all start for you? Um, let, let's let's take photography. Is it going to be one of those typical, well, my dad gave me a camera stories, or, or, or is it different? Very different. Very different. And, it, it, it's a, and it's a story I've told a few times, but what happened was um, we had a baby, me and my wife. We had our first baby. And... At that time, I was working full time. I was a I was a database marketing analyst. It's very glamorous. It's very exciting. It all was good. He had uh, the, my wife had a year off uh, on maternity leave to look after the baby, and then after that year, she went, she had to go back to a full time job. I was in a full time job, and and he had to go to full time nursery. I just it just wasn't something that I was prepared to cope with. You know that I was obsessed with him at that. I mean, I'm still obsessed with my kids anyway. But at that time, I thought, well, somebody else gets to see him for 50, 60 hours a week. And what we get, the grumpy evenings and the weekends, you know, it didn't, it didn't feel right. And then at that time I was, I had photography as a bit of a, a bit of a, an obsessive hobby, I guess. And I just remember quite vividly, really standing in the garden with my wife one evening, just going, this can't happen. We, I, I'm not happy with him being looked after for 50 hours a week by somebody else. Somebody else gets the best of him, basically. Yeah. And also get to impress themselves on him, and we're not getting that opportunity. So I said, "Well, I'm going to be a photographer." And she just said, "Where's the? Where's the? How are you going to be? <laughs> You're not a photographer." And I said, "No, but I really like it, so that's what I'm going to do." And that was really it. That was really. It. I just from that day it was really whimsical. Almost it was. I just said, "Well, that's what I'm going to do." So I from that day I was 
my sole focus was on becoming a photographer and turning this kind of obsessive hobby into a business. So where did the no- where did the knowledge come from then? I know you said you you were doing a bit of photography, but there's there's a difference between doing a bit of photography and <laughs> doing photography. Well, yeah, I'm okay. I just kind of tend to jump into things. So we'd got married two years before this, and I bought a good camera to take on my honeymoon. So that was the first time I ever bought a what I'd call a proper camera, a DSLR. Right. Uh, and that was the Canon 400D. So my first, that was my first ever uh, proper camera, but only the kit, you know, it was the kit lens and all the rest of it. And really just, I bought a book with it because I, somebody told me, I can't remember who told me this, but somebody told me, don't, don't stick it on auto, like learn what the other options do. And at that time, obviously like everybody, I was obsessed with making things blurry, giving things a blurry background. So my, <laughs> that was my, really, that's all I wanted to learn. So I guess in between then and the moment when I said, well, I'm going to be a photographer, I was, I was just kind of, I'd read the odd website, maybe join the odd forum. You know, this was before really Facebook and all the rest of it was a big thing. There wasn't, there weren't Facebook groups. You had to join actual mm. forum websites. Mm. And then, you know, I'd maybe take part in little challenges in these forum websites. And it was just, it was very much a hobby. But as you learn as you go along, don't you? And I was, I was taking a lot of pictures. I was taking my camera pretty much everywhere with me. Just learning as I went along. But from the moment I decided I was going to be a photographer, that's when it ramped up really. So then I started buying books subscribing to websites he had to pay for and i remember it wasn't long after that that i just built a website you know a friend of mine was shooting weddings as kind of a week what you would back then have called a weekend warrior not sure if that term, term really exists well, I anymore still, i think it still does exist yeah it's, it's a bit of a derogatory one isn't it i don't think it has the quite the same negative connotations yeah is it? yeah yeah, perhaps yeah. Not, yeah um because back then it was definitely like these people who were you know yeah. breaking the industry they've for invaded been, they've invaded our space how dare they <laughs> yeah. have characters yeah yeah, and uh, and I just went along to a wedding. I, w- the first thing that happened actually was after the the, the declaration that I was going to be a photographer was my cousin got married, and I took my camera and thinking that I was going to take some great pictures, and that really that day really showed me how how difficult weddings were going to be to capture. I don't know why I had an initial thought of going towards weddings. I guess it was because because I had a friend who was kind of doing it on yeah. The, on the I, side. I was going to say, was it your friend that that's that's built your direction? Yeah, I think so. I think that was what it was. And and also I just kind of saw it as a potentially not I wouldn't say that I wouldn't use the word lucrative, but I saw it as a I'd be able to make money from it. So I shot my cousin's wedding, didn't do a very good job, learned a lot about the fact that I did not know a lot about photography and, and certainly photography of moving objects. You know, I was great at taking a picture of an of an apple on the sideboard at home. <laughs> but as soon as somebody was in a dark church moving at all, you know, it was just a terrible photo. So and I didn't understand why why they were coming out terrible either. So then again, my learning kind of ramped up again after that, and you know, I, I had a job. I was I was honestly spending all day every day on the on the internet looking at photography. Uh, so then, it was a few months after that, there, there, this friend of mine had a wedding, and he just asked me to come and help him. So uh, I hired. I remember I hired I hired a seventy two hundred because back then I believed that that if you were in any way professional, you needed a seven foot long white lens. So that's what I hired, and I got enough out of that wedding to make a portfolio. I was I was. I knew how to build a website, so I built my own website with that portfolio. This was before anything like WordPress or anything existed, so you had to you just had to build it from scratch. Dreamweaver and things like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I just I built it in code. Did you? Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, because I was a programmer back then. Of course, so, yeah, of course. So you had an advantage in that respect. I did. I had a lot of advantages yeah. really in the, at that time. That it was a lot easier for me to get into the industry because of those because of the things that I knew how to do. So building a website and I knew how to also run Google ads, which again, wasn't, wasn't really a mainstream thing back then. So built a website with this one wedding, stuck a load of Google ads on and with it, before I knew it, I had 25 bookings and I was very cheap. So it's, you know, it's kind of a, a lot of people go, Oh my God, 25 bookings. But you know, I was charging 450 pound a wedding, but my philosophy really was if I was going to become a photographer, I had to do a lot of work as quickly as possible to develop a style and also just to practice. So the price point made it that I could literally just experiment at every wedding. Nobody really cared what they got out of it. Uh, I mean, they cared that they got a set of pictures, and I, but I knew I could guarantee a set of pictures. I just couldn't really guarantee they were going to be any good. And yeah, and then a year later, I'd done a, I'd done a year of weddings and was able, was ready to give my job up. Well, I was kind of on the on the edge really because I'm quite a cautious person in a lot of ways. I had you know I had a guaranteed salary, and then we had another baby on the way as well. So I signed up for some mentoring. So I signed up for a year-long mentoring, think, thinking that was going to be the thing that got me into full-time photography. And it kind of backfired because 
it made me realize how stubborn I was in, in what I wanted to do. And I didn't really want to be told how to do it by somebody else. Mm. And I certainly didn't want to be told how to do it their way when I felt like I wasn't creating the best work in the world at that point, but I definitely felt like I had it inside of me to, to have my own style and to, to carve my own path really into the industry. Because uh, again, I was lucky at a time when wedding photography was quite safe and boring back then. So I did a couple of months of this year long mentoring program and then, and then, uh, gave it backed out of it to do my own thing. Again, it was a conversation with my wife. So I was struggling a lot with having a full-time job, trying to give time to the family and also running what had become pretty much a full-time wedding photography business on the side. So something had to give one night. And I remember not, I didn't, I didn't break down about it, but I just kind of said, well, I'm, I'm going to have to pick. And she said to me, we'll just, just give your job up. So the next day I handed my notice in at work and I wasn't in a comfortable position business wise, but uh, I probably only had one or two bookings in for the future. Like I said, we had a baby on the way and bills to pay, but I really, really thought that if I had the time to give to the business, I could build it and you know, it paid off. It, it, there's a saying that I, that, uh, I heard once, which was leap and the net will appear and the net appeared and caught me. And you know, I've been sitting in the net ever since. Well, I love that expression. Leap yeah, and the great, net will appear. I th- the first person I heard that from was a, a photographer. She's a family photographer now in Manchester called Anna Hardy. Yeah. That was kind of one of her life mottos. Yeah. And I, and I just thought, I just think it's great. I think it's, it is. I, yeah. did, I didn't know it at the time. So I didn't realize I was leaping and hoping for a net, but mm. yeah, I mean, I never looked back from then really. I, it really paid, having the extra time to, to just invest in the business just really really paid off this this work-life balance that you talk about this this quite intriguing because of course um at the time that the children were quite young so um you're switching your work-life balance from monday to friday to saturday and sunday i know that weddings now happen all week long as well but t- traditionally that's the way that's the way we look at weddings friday saturday sunday perhaps but now of course um your children and you can see that with your photography on your website of them they're getting older and so your work-life balance now and um, perhaps that's um an awkward way around for you you're not there at the weekends when they're around but you are there during the week when they're now at school <laughs> A little bit. I mean, the, the uh, obviously the thing that kind of t- triggered me becoming a wedding photographer was because I wanted to be a more present parent and you know be the main influence on my kids' lives. And it, you know, my by the, so I made that decision when my first uh, son went to nursery when he was one, and it, I wasn't able to be full time as a photographer until he was probably nearly four. You know, oh, three okay. and a half, four. Yeah. yeah. But at that point, we had another baby and i was able to then be at home full time with him so again my wife had a year off on maternity leave but after that i was the, i was a stay at home dad monday to friday most of the time and wasn't able to do a lot of work mm. but my i've always thought to me it's the little things you know i love being here when they leave for school and when they get home from school or yeah. being able to pick them up from school or being able to take them to stuff or being able to go to sports day without having to ask somebody rather than just being here all weekend so to me it's it's not the hugest of deals that i'm not around at some weekends yeah. and also the you know these days i'm very lucky in a lot of ways in that i'm able to um really limit the number of weddings that i do so i only aim to do 20 a year really uh, wow. yeah um so i'm not it's not like i'm away every weekend either let's talk about style it's a funny old question to ask because some people say i don't really want a label neil i'm just a wedding photographer <laughs> that's what i am i'm i'm neither documentary or reportage or or traditional, or, you know, I am a wedding photographer. That's what I do. That's it, really. That, that's it in a nutshell. I mean, obviously, you just really, you can only take pictures of, of things in a, in a way that you, appeals to you, I think. And I'm not particularly offbeat, but at the same time, I'm not particularly traditional. Uh, so I, th- I sit somewhere between the two, probably more toward traditional than offbeat for the vast majority of my work. But I like to make impressive photos but that could be that's not one to me that's not one style and it's almost like that can't be a style but um i guess my pictures are a little bit darker than a lot of people's uh you know i tend to expose expose for highlights more often than not if possible mm. so which which tends to give give my images a darker look uh, and that's definitely put clients off over the years but i'm quite happy to put pe- people off uh, because then it means the people that are turned on to it are more turned on than if you were just trying to make generic wedding photography. So that's always been a philosophy really is to not, is to try my hardest not to make generic wedding photography and just to take 
what I th- what I feel like is a cool is cool photos of of the wedding that's in front of me, and and, and I think my style is it, it can change from wedding to wedding as well. It kind of molds a little bit to the you know to the style of the venue or to the people or to the general theme of the wedding. I, I know that a lot of people see my work as a little bit darker, and I even have clients saying we want we we want you to do it, but we want it to be brighter. And you know, often those people are getting married in a in a marquee in the middle of summer. So I'm I always say to them, well, it's going to be brighter because yeah. that's the style of your wedding. I don't really come and trying to take dark moody pictures but i know a lot of people over the years that's how they've lab- that's how they've labeled my work is is maybe a bit darker and a bit moodier do you think people yeah. are too uh, too easily look for a style or a label about i do yeah. yeah do you yeah, yeah. and also you, you, I, i've always been wary of it myself because i feel like you can pigeonhole yourself a little bit this again goes back to the whole ideal client thing i feel like i you know i do these 20 ish weddings a year and i feel like i do 20 very different weddings every year yeah. so that my weddings don't have a style to them there's not like i'm not always doing tp weddings or i'm not always doing uh you know big lavish uh, weddings in in posh hotels you know i'll do a tp wedding the next week i'll do a posh hotel wedding the next week i might do uh an outdoors wedding in a field you know because i haven't overly pigeonholed my style and if you do read you know that page that i've made on my website about style it's more about the fact you know what i like in photos which is mainly i i like photos to be in color because that yeah. because that's how i see and that's yeah. how i shoot i always shoot in color i know there's people who for instance always have their camera lcd or viewfinder on a black and white mode because they will shoot and see in black and white and now, obviously, with those types of people, that their work will then be predominantly black and white, and the other way around, really. Yeah. I guess, yeah. I mean, that's that's it's very, very difficult. I think. I mean, it's, I'm very envious of people who are, who are able to say, "Well, my style is this, 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 and this." Yeah. But at the same time, I'm quite happy to not be able to say that about my own work. And I'd, I'd say you probably changed as the years have gone on as well, wouldn't you, Adam? I have definitely. Yeah. yeah. A lot of it as well goes back to the. You have little realizations, I think, as as you go th- as you go along, and also you don't you never want to get bored of your own work. And I felt feel like if I was just churning out the same thing all the time, I'd, I'd probably have got bored of it and moved on to something else by now. Yeah. Uh, but I'm definitely not bored of it. And the thing I realized this was probably year before last was I love the pictures that I take of my own family, and a lot of people have all, have very kindly complimented me on those photos. And even sometimes have been bold enough, and and I like people who are happy to express their opinions to say they prefer those photos to the way that I shoot weddings, <laughs> and, and I, I kind of love stuff like that. And it made me it did make me think. And the thing is, when I'm shooting the my kids, is I only ever take what they give me. And I know somebody like you, as a who is a, almost a pure documentary photographer, will say, "Well, obviously," but I never really had that same approach in weddings. I always felt like I had to give a little bit of direction or tell people where to stand in in relation to the light. If I had control, if it, if it was the type of, mo- you know, bridal prep or uh, portraits or, you know, even at other points during the day, maybe just to give a little bit of direction if I felt like I could make the picture better. But I never, ever did that with the with the kids. I'll never tell them what to do or where to go. Or, Isn't that or, interesting? Yeah. And so I guess over the last two years, especially, I've, trying to be, I've been trying to bring that approach more and more and more into my wedding work away from the portraits on the day. That's the kind of pictures that I love when I've without them realizing what i was doing i was able to make these pictures so yeah i think that's the that's the way my style has evolved i guess in the last two years is just to take what i'm given and make the best possible pictures out of it without any interference whatsoever adam johnson and of course we'll have links to his website on the web page for today's show at fujicast.co.uk if you'd like to hear more of adam's story including how he's been dealing with this enforced timeout and what he thinks about the so-called restart, more on his shooting style, the way that he shoots, how he is dealing with weddings that he's due to shoot under COVID restrictions, the destination weddings and more, then he is the first business guest in the members area of the Photography Daily Show, which, for the price of two fancy oat milk lattes and a couple of naughty but nice sticky buns, features documentary-length interviews with inspirational photographers twice a month, plus bonus snapshot episodes, including when the tape stopped rolling, what was said before and after the interviews. So, if after you've consumed the Fujicast this week, join us for the free Monday to Friday editions of Photography Daily, available on all your podcast apps and online at photographydaily.show. And I do want to get a mention in for next week's interview that's going to be here with Scott Schillam from the Photography Movement. It's a, a reasonably hard-hitting interview, actually, um, and it deals with a subject we've been talking about much of late. And I think it's very, very important at the moment in terms of photographers and the way that they're feeling about their business and just, just generally um, what's been going on with the world. 
over the last four, five, six months. Scott Schillam from the Photography Movement talking about uh, talking about mental health next week on the show. Right, back to your questions. Kev, do you want to go first? Yes. Uh, yeah, so I have a question from Jess Camilleri. Sorry, Kev, I think you'll find that's Camilleri. Camilleri. Is it Camilleri? Oh, I get a right and a wrong. <laughs> By the way, it's Jez as well, not not Jess. Don't you have any of that Camembert cheese? Camilleri cheese. Oh, I love Camilleri cheese. Cam- Tell you what. Camembert, I want to bet. Roast up a bit of that Camilleri. Right. That's Wonderful it. for I'm lunch. Gonna, I'm going to ju- go and join Fuji Love. <laughs> right. Okay. Anyway, Jess Camilleri mm-hmm, says, <laughs> "Hi, Jess. Uh, Jess here from Sydney. Oh, great. He's from Australia. Oh, as well. yeah. Have you ever been yeah. to Australia? I uh, hope you're keeping well in these weird times. <laughs> so, thanks as ever for the podcast. They're very much looking forward to yada 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 yes. yada yada yada." I have a question re memory cards. Uh, when a camera takes two cards, should they be treated as pairs or is this not necessary? For example, I have two 32 gig uh, memory cards sending RAWs to one and JPEGs to the other. The RAW one will obviously fill up first. Correct. When this happens, do I need to swap out both or can I simply swap out the RAW one? Yeah. Good question. I'm guessing I can swap out the RAW card as the file names will keep incrementing yes. and be unique. Yes. But I'm not really sure if there's any weirdness there. It's an XT3 in case you're thinking about what camera it is. Do you know the answer? No, I don't. Uh, actually, <laughs> I love the way you look at me. <laughs> actually, Let me get one over on Neil. Do you know the answer? No, I don't. <laughs> uh, I need a little, well, come to Uncle Kev. I need a little uh, sound. I need a little sound track <laughs> button for that. <laughs> ding, I'll, ding. I'll give you one. <laughs> Actually, he answered the question himself, in fairness. So you don't actually need to change out both. However, I think it's good practice, too. So, for example... Oh, I don't. I always leave the JPEG one just rolling on through. Yeah, I mean, you can, but but I, I typically do it just for uh, peace of mind. Um, mm. I I normally... I'm all, I, you, again, you don't have to, but I would encourage people to use the same size memory cards in both slots. Mm. Um, same brand, same speed. That's actually more important. So, you know, try not to be not try have really slow memory cards in one slot and really fast memory cards in the other slot. Again, it should be fine, but yeah. I would just yeah. err in on the side of caution. Uh, so, if I've got two thirty-two gig cards, RAW and JPEG going to one, I will swap them both out once the RAW file once the RAW card is full. Uh, it just keeps the nomenclature easier when I'm downloading the cards and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, you don't have to, but I would say good best practice. The reason I've always kept one, uh, yeah, now, I mean, you said erring on the side of caution, and my caution has always been, look, leave leave one big thumping great big JPEG in there. Mm. Now, this is talking about wedding work, obviously, yeah. because I, I like the idea that a camera has the full wedding in it, mm-hmm. and then in my um, in my wherever I keep it in a pocket or whatever usually yeah. that the, the little card wallet is taking the raws rolling the card the raws through so there's always there's always a card off camera and in, in, in a yeah. different place yeah and I've always thought about you know what if I stop at what if I stop for my my, my usual vat of chocolate um, mm. you know my health food kick on the way back from a wedding and I, I wouldn't want I wouldn't want the wedding to be to no. be stolen so sort of cards on me and the cameras have which are in the car still have yeah, no, you're quite right. Yeah, yeah you, you're quite right. I mean, we mine's, mine's more of a security thing. Than, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I've done. I also actually used to shoot like that myself. I used to yeah. shoot with a two five six meg yeah. card and, and do a very similar thing. But I, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Technically, I think probably it's better to swap so the cards out when one's out. full. Um, but yeah, this is this is working on the assumption that both the cards are the same size. So that's yeah. probably where I'm getting my. Yeah. My feelings from, but yeah, if you've got one giant card, then you can probably get seven or eight weddings on there. Do you remember that story I told you about the uh, the second shooter that um, went to the Gherkin with me? Yeah, and uh, she had well, she she operated that way to twin cards, um, mm. but she put both cards in a card wallet, mm. then left the card wallet on the side with a coffee, and then the card wallet never came back again, and then the whole wedding from her shooting position was yeah. lost. I mean, yeah. fortunately, I, I, she hadn't been sold in as a second shooter. Yeah. But um, mm. no, I always have my my cards are always on my body. Yeah. They're they're literally physically attached to my belt. Um, <laughs> well, via, what are you going to say then? Via straps, so they can't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. um, but yes, quite. Yeah, you do introduce yeah. all kinds of issues like that. Uh, Matt Matt uh, Matt's Hatling Fernblad has uh, has written a bit of a fan of yours actually, Kev. I, I just wanted to say a few minutes, uh, take a few minutes to say thank you. I I, I write this to you, Kevin. 
Um, your work has made a big impact on my own photography, and I feel like I'm now in a place where I belong. Hmm. I've been listening to you two. He's rich. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt, are you rich? <laughs> Um, I've been listening to you two squabble and found it to be the most enjoyable company whilst working on my way to enthusiastic renovation projects. Who who knew a house would be that much work? Most of all, it really ignited my love for photography again and in many ways also changed it. Um, oh, he's used your expression here. I no longer struggle to achieve perfection. What's that phrase again, Kev? Picture doesn't need to be good. It just needs to be important. Yes. Now, Kevin, I bought the presets. It sounds like it's going to be um, a complaint now, doesn't it? Now, Kevin, I bought the presets during the ongoing COVID sale, and my, oh my, they're absolutely great. I don't I do not uh, do weddings or anything, but I really like the documentary style combined with the street and family photography. With the presets, I now get the result I was imagining when taking the picture. It's like a live ad for you, Kev, this. Yeah. After using it, it ju- just a couple of times, I've, I feel... Ah, here we go, here's the point. After using them, though, just a couple of times, I almost feel like I'm cheating. Am I cheating? Hmm preset question thank you both and p.s i'd like to adopt kevin <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say that bit we'll see. uh are you cheating he, he did send some good photos in actually from his boat I, trip I, I did see them I think. yeah look at yeah. and three nieces during during a wedding three three weeks ago covid yeah. wedding just the closest family present yeah yeah mm. i love that last picture actually mm. yeah we should um we should try and include those maybe yeah, on the website yeah. if you have it uh no of course Matt, you're not cheating because how can it be cheating when you paid me money <laughs> <laughs> Good, yeah, yeah that's it yeah. <laughs> there endeth the lesson yeah um no i actually i mean it's a really interesting point and and do you know what i it, it i was speaking again to uh somebody on the weekend and about the presets and he was like well what, you know what have you done you know like the government's not helping you what yeah. have you done and yeah. i was like well i've taken out a big loan and i released some presets that uh you know i've all i've been asked many times about my black and white work and I didn't want to just rush out something crass, and and but I'd always maintained that I would never release my uh, black and white presets that that really emulate what I did, yeah. um, because I just didn't I didn't feel like it was the right thing to do. But then, of course, this this virus came along, and well, it became the right thing to and do. It became the right thing to do very quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I did it properly, and 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 so no, I don't. I mean, we all use presets to a certain extent. Yeah. Even if you use a JPEG in the camera, it's a yeah. preset. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't. I don't think you're cheating. Um, and of course, they're they're starting points. You can then change it to to be how you wish um and enjoy them. I, I tell you what. Um, without wanting this to sound like a, a Kevin fan zone for a second. But the the preset you made called Newspaper, which I know wasn't one that you expected to be one of the more popular ones. For me, like that, that's fantastic. Mm. It's got a really good filmic quality to it. Mm. Yeah. Really, it has. And funnily enough, I've started shooting some film again, as you know, some HP5 and stuff. And... Um, and I, I, I thought I was thinking that I thought, oh, this, you know, this is clearly film. I can tell the difference yeah. when I look at them on a print. But, uh, but photography comes darn close. I'm telling you that yeah. definitely. Yeah. Right then, book of the week. Oh, well, book of yes. the week. Yes. Book of the week He's today. Self-publishing, you said. Yeah. So this is by uh, this is a book by a photographer called Kant Rathod. Right. From okay. where? Uh, well, it's from the UK, I believe. I'm, uh, I'm not sure or- originally from the UK. Oh, wow. You just turned um, a couple of pages and I, my heart is beating faster. All of these images of London these. Bridge and stuff. Wow. But um, Shadow, play or what? Yeah. So so this was published in March 2020. Kant actually sent me a copy of the book, which is uh, not the reason why I'm talking about it, because I wouldn't, wouldn't do just that thing. However, I'm talking about it because I really like it. And it's really well published, really well um, put together, nice feel to it. You know, it's not it's clearly not kind of a cheap old kind of um, run of the mill print or anything. Uh, it starts out at the beginning, a uh, little introduction. We live in uncertain times. The simple things in life we take for granted have now become difficult to experience. We've entered a new era of how we carry out our life uh, routine and interact with each other. And there it goes on. And so it, they're all black and white pictures, street photography at, uh, I think it's finest, really. A um, lot of great pictures, pretty much all through kind of London. And I'm looking at South Bank now. Um, he's got a great design eye as well hasn't he it's a very nice book it's yeah. as i always say lets the pictures breathe lots of negative space on yeah. the opposite page yeah. um where a comment is necessary the God. comment is there so for example on uh a pay- book without no pages numbers again um somewhere in the middle national theater <laughs> london and i shared a lot of very good study of geometry in yeah. these these pictures 
Um, and uh, the quote for this particular image, which is a lady walking across the, um, the, the kind of boardwalk that steps at the top of the National Theatre, says, Be grateful for the spaces we experience and manoeuvre around, dwarfed by the built environment. We are merely spectators in the theatre and grand structures. We discover mm. through the complex maze, not knowing where we will see next what oh, we will see next poetry uh yeah um paternoster square of course lovely place uh, all of all of the places that we all wander around london thinking i'm going to do street photography there and then we we can't go for a beer afterwards and think didn't get anything how many times have we done that kev millions <laughs> millions however once once we're allowed you and i we're going on a, a journey we are doing that um we are do you mean the one where we're going to go and do the portraits yes yeah yeah, yeah. uh so um, do you know who publishes this it's self-published. It says on the back. I know self-published, but but who? Uh, no. So uh, you probably. I don't know whether you will get it on Amazon or anything like that. So we will obviously link to it in uh, in the website. However, you can uh, you can get it from his website, which is www. Now you have to listen carefully to this, dear right. listeners. Ready? It's not what you see. Dot photography. Great. Yeah. It's not what you see dot photography, photography yeah. uh, there we go Public, photo, photographed written designed and self-published by Kant Rathod when, when I meant who published it what I meant was um, who did he go to to self-publish through Don't and that, I'd love Doesn't to say. know that because this is a beautiful book yeah maybe yeah, maybe, Kant, really maybe Kant will let us know yeah, um, yeah so it says on the back Kant's work has been featured in a number of magazines including lots of them <laughs> loads loads there you go oh. very good book I like it I really like it so Super. thank you, Kent. Um, we have got a disaster story coming up, but before we do that, can we just roll back and uh, remind you of the wonderful um, competition that we have launched this week? Um, a chance for you to win Toolbox. Toolbox. <laughs> 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 Toolbox, a little MIDI controller yeah. for... Uh, oh, it's actually a USB controller for uh, Lightroom. Uh, very good, lots of... It's it's small, so it's, it's, it's about the same size as a... Mm, I don't know. I'm randomly looking around your studio for something that that might make sense to a listener. I don't know. It's. it's what about like, this this sort of Mac keyboard? It's here. about half the size of a Mac keyboard. Is it half the size of? Yeah. And this is the smaller of the um, wireless Mac keyboard, so it's half the size of that. Is yeah. It? It's it's it's, wow. it's not like the um, what's the other ones you can get? You know the big long ones with yeah. lots and hundreds of dials and things like that. Uh, it's it's much smaller, so fits well on the desk. Toolbox, you can see all of that on the internet. Type in Toolbox onto the internet or come to our website, futurecast.co.uk. We will have a menu option called Toolbox where you can see more about it and you can enter the competition. We mm. want to see a picture that's defined your coming out of lockdown somehow. Doesn't I was going to say celebrates your coming down uh, out of lockdown. We're, we're, not, we're not quite at the celebratory. We've kicked its backside yet. Yeah. But this is coming out of lockdown. Uh, and it, you can interpret it as you so wish. We are, we are just going to um, pick a winner and we will announce the winner on the 10th of August, 2020, my 1100th birthday. 1100th <laughs> birthday. And don't, don't forget, Kev said um, that he's uh, he would have to take pictures of beer. to Because uh, to, <laughs> um, the, the, the biggest thing that's happened to Kevin all this time is he changed his beer brand. <laughs> there we go. Right, this one is from Steve at Art by Design Photography. Hello, Neil. Hello, Kev. Thanks for uh, keeping me entertained each uh, Monday morning. Just submitting a disaster story, if you like this, to be added to, to the podcast. Story shows how committed we are as photographers to make sure we always get to that wedding. So, I was walking my dog on the morning of a wedding. We were walking through a park and my dog decided to walk under a signpost. So I followed him under the post, but stood up way too early. And you guessed it, I hit the head on the edge of the sign. They're sharp, the edges of signs, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, I can feel... I'm wincing for you now, Steve, from That's Art by Design Photography. Horrible. Yeah. Now, at the time, I thought it wasn't that bad until I notified... I noticed something... Run, notified? Noticed something running down my face. So I decided to take a selfie and realised it was way worse than I thought. Ow. Huge gash in my forehead, blood running down my face. As the wedding was in uh, in in an hour's time, I thought it'd be fine. I'd get home, I'd stick a plaster on it, and get off to the wedding. But as soon as I, as the wife saw how bad it was, she rushed me off to casualty, and we ended up getting the the gash glued. Oh, glued. I bet. glued. Oof. Don't they? Oh, that, that must hurt. That sounds like an iodine on something. Glued? That can't be painless. 
I laughed it off and um, and and kept dabbing the, uh, the, the uh, to cut the the, st- uh, the to stem the flow. I'll get there in the end. And carried on photographing this wedding all day. People were noticing it though. During the group shots in particular, I hadn't realised that cut had started to swell and the blood was actually running down my cheek. Oh, hideous! I now have a nice scar on my forehead to remind myself. Yeah. Don't go walking your dog in the morning of a wedding as you never know what might happen. That sounds like laziness to me now, Steve, from, from Art by Design Photography. Oh, that does sound very, it, it very does sound painful. It does sound very horrible, but um, there we go. There, there's, there's uh, there, well, I suppose there's a lesson. Just be lazy on the morning of a wedding and refuse to do any chores. And um, I, I think we're coming towards the end of the disaster stories bag now. We've we've had quite a few in a few quite a few before lockdown. We've had a, we had one or two. I think I, during I, I've lockdown. got one I can add to it. Have you? What's yeah, yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty twenty. That's my disaster I'll story. I tell you what, I'll be really <laughs> pleased. I'm going to put that in the done with file. I'll be really pleased to see this year off. Oh, I tell you what, talk about having uh, some sort of. Um, some sort of party, some sort of New Year's Eve party. It's going to be an end of 2020 party. Good riddance to you, 2020. Yes. Yeah, let's hope 2021's better. It can <laughs> off. <laughs> Kev. Right, and that's it for an- another week. Um, thank you for your emails. Uh, please don't forget to keep sending them in. Um, click at fujicast.co.uk. The show really, really does run from your questions now, you don't have to uh, necessarily just use the email address you can go onto the website because you'll need to go there for the toolbox competition from which you can also use the contact form and send in some lovely questions from there as well um, if you haven't um, gone there yet or you haven't joined uh, we have a Facebook group for any questions you have about today's show and any comments play nice of course our moderators Steve and Peter are in there too with their shiny FIFA referee whistles at standby so go join us there um, and and also there, there's another group, a sort of a, a breakaway group as well. The um, the four Fujicast at four group, isn't there? Where mm-hmm. you can, every single day between four and five, uh, you upload the first thing that you see, the first thing that's in front of your face. I feel so guilty about that. Do you, you've not done a lot, to be honest. I in did that. Too. that was your idea. I've done three. Three. It was my idea. Three, Kev. Yeah. Three. Really. Good old Steve Ford took oh, the. Took it. We will have to get him something as a as a prize. As I a well so. done, Steve. I think so. Yeah, I, I think yeah. it'll only last one year. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell you what, Steve's a trooper. He's, he'll be I back. Think it's very true. I've got an idea for you, Kev. Yeah, <laughs> another thing you can take part in three times in a year. <laughs> If you've if you've liked this or any of the week's shows, thank you. And if you can, if you feel it's relevant as well, please leave a, a review. Um, some of the apps have it, some don't. In particular, Apple Podcasts, of course, does. And also, I'd just like to say thank you for the people who have uh, popped a little few pennies into the tip jar yeah. recently. There has been a handful of you. Um, yes. We we yes, kind yes, of yes. get we get emails to say that it's come in. Um, it's not easy for us to to reply to everybody individually. So this is a, a general shout out to everybody who has tipped us. We mm. greatly appreciate it. And we are now off to Bermuda. <laughs> really? Boom, boom. Are you are you sure? <laughs> oh, that sounds nice. Who's going to get on the aircraft? You got? And I, I, I want socially distanced aircraft. I yeah. want to feel like I'm in first class. <laughs> Nobody around me for a mile at least. Um, music this week from Blue Wednesday. Supporting music from the incredible Artlist.io. We will see you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye. The Fuji Cast is an independent loading zone production. Email the show with your questions and words of wisdom to click at fujicast.co.uk email any complaints and political nonsense to our wives who will deal with your comments in their own good time and in their own good way